Jesse Rich Ministries, called by God to take the word of faith to New York City, America, and all the world. Today, God's people desperately need to be taught who they are in Christ Jesus, how to be led by the Holy Spirit, and walk in the God kind of love so they can live in victory in every area of their life. Stay tuned to today's dynamic message as Brother Rich ministers the word of faith. Hey, praise the Lord. I'm Pastor Jesse Rich. Honored, delighted, glad you tuned in today. Let's sort of Bibles over here, Mark chapter 11. Now we're laying a faith foundation in God's Word, from God's Word, to build us up spiritually. So we got something real solid, His rock, the Word of God to stand upon, to build our life on. Remember the Bible says, having done all, stand, stand therefore. Well, He's expecting us, God, to stand on His promises. Use our authority, use the name of Jesus, use what God gave us. And take verse 23 and 24 and memorize them. Every day of your life, just let those words come out your mouth about what Jesus said. And the more you rehearse them, the more you meditate on them, the more familiar you become with them, the more apt you'll be able to use them when a situation arises for the occasion. So Jesus had spoken the fig tree, cursed it, withered away. The disciples were amazed that this happened. Master, behold, the fig tree thou cursed withered away. Jesus answered and said, have faith in God. Then he goes on and says, for verily I say unto you, that whosoever say in this mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast to sea, and shall not doubt in his heart. But shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. Now notice, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Now think about that. This is Jesus Christ that said this. This is the same one that spoke John 3.16. Same Holy Spirit authorized these and put them in the word for us. Now if everybody in the body of Christ can believe John 3.16, Everybody in the body of Christ can believe Mark eleven twenty three. 23. I mean, I've never heard anybody really monkey around with John 3, 16. That, you know, that, that means spiritual, or this means that. But boy, when it comes to authority verses, I mean, many times when it comes to Jesus talking about you using your authority, he starts out by saying, verily or verily, verily. Verily I say in you, what's your issue? Bind your issue, bound in heaven. Verily I say in you, what's your ask the Father in my name? He will give it to you. So Jesus said, have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever say in this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which you saith shall come to pass, he shall whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you what things there are when you pray, believe you see them, shall have them. And when you stand praying, forgive, if you have aught against any. Aught means anything against anybody about anything. When you stand praying, forgive, if you have aught against any. That your Father which heaven forgive your trust me. Now this Jesus that said about forgiveness, he's the one that hung on a cross and forgave them that were crucified. Lay not this sin in their charge. Forgive them, they know not they do. Just like Stephen, follow the example of Jesus when Stephen's being stoned. Forgive him, God. Well, so Jesus knows something about forgiving. I mean, you know, we, we would have understood if Jesus, as they started crucifying and put this horrific pain in, in him, Jesus could call 12 legions of angels to come and rescue stop the whole procedure. Now, other people, you know, they're, they were crucified, they were crucified. But he could have stopped it. Who would have blamed him if he did? You know, with the pain, if he could have, to stop it. He died for us when we were ungodly, when we were no good, when we were sinners. He didn't die for good people. He died for sinners. So we might be made the righteous of God in Christ. And we need to realize that you know where God's brought us out of. And remember those dear precious people that haven't received salvation. And those dear Christians that haven't got a revelation of whatever. To be patient with them and keep on praying for them. But Jesus said, and when you stand praying, forgive you have ought against them. It's your father which ever give your trespasses. But if you not forgive, neither your father which ever give your trespasses. Well, we're to forgive if we got ought against anyone. And make sure that we've been reading there from Matthew chapter 7, Jesus said, Judge not, that you be not judged. For with the judgment you judge, you should be judged. With the measure you met, you should be measured unto you again. So it's going to come back to you again. If you judge anyone, it's going to come back to you again. You're going to see this again. It's going to be replayed, but now it's going to be on you. Now that's why all of us should realize here that this is something none of us want to do. Who art thou that judges another man's servant? Remember there in Romans chapter 14, verse 4. Now, we love everybody. Hate the sin. Even when we committed sin, we hate the sin, but we love everybody. We love God and we love people. But see, what happens is people have a tendency, and this can happen to any of us, 
if we don't monitor ourselves, keep ourselves in the Word, keep ourselves in prayer. See, we should always examine ourselves to see we're in the faith. We not just assume we are, but am I walking in love? Am I being kind? Am I being patient? Am I being long-suffering? I mean, there's been times I was long-suffering, but I wasn't kind while I was doing it. Come on, I mean, hurry up. Let's pick up the pace here. <laughs> well, you see, these are things that we, we got to work on daily. None of us have arrived. We repress towards the mark of the high calling. We haven't obtained. I mean, we thank God we got saved, but we're growing and developed spiritually and should be every single day of our life. In other words, we should catch ourselves doing things, thinking things, saying things that we know we shouldn't do, say, or think. And that means if we do, we are catching ourselves, then we are monitoring ourselves. Then we are trying to become a better Christian, become a better at doing the Word. So, when it comes to using your authority, see, many dear people have attempted to use their authority in Jesus' name and didn't receive what they prayed for and didn't receive or the mountain didn't move that they spoke to. And one of the reasons was this, they didn't keep their spirit man built up enough. See, you've got to be able to release the authority that's in you and you've got to keep that authority built up in you. Like in a natural fighting if you're going to be a good physical fighter, then you're going to have to stay in shape physically and stay strong. If you're going to be good at fighting a good fight of faith, you've got to stay strong spiritually. Stay in the Word. Stay in prayer. Stay in worshiping God. Stay walking in love. Stay being led by the Holy Spirit. can't just ignore what the Holy Spirit's telling you from the Word or by an inward witness. You can't just love people that you like. What about all the other people? No, we've got to love everybody. And you know we have to know things in our spirit. God will give a discernment about something. Someone did something. Someone's causing trouble. Then we got to be aware of that. Especially as ministers of the gospel. You know, we don't want the sheep getting attacked. But at the same time, we watch out for the judgment. We don't repeat and say things about other dear people that is wrong. You know, when we met that we couldn't wait to say something about it. Our flesh couldn't wait to tell somebody about it. No, those are things that we got to monitor ourselves on and then forgive everybody of whatever they've done. Walk in love in the name of Jesus. Do our part about interceding, praying for others. And then to avoid strife. You know, over here in James, you have been referring to this a little bit, but let's go over here in James and read here what the Scripture says here in James. Um, now it's here in, in chapter 3. Now, the scripture says here in verse 16, for, in, for where envy and strife is, there's confusion and every evil work. Now, how does this every evil work get in? Through envy and strife. Remember, Paul said in 1 Corinthians, by the Holy Spirit, chapter 3, he wanted to give him milk, but he had, or wanted to give him meat, but he had to give him milk because there's, there was division among them. That's like strife. Well, I'm Paul, I'm Apollos. They're causing division. They're sowing discord among them. So you notice here it said here that when strife enters in, see, envy and strife, confusion comes in. Strife is something that we got to stay away from. We don't want to enter in our house or in our life. We don't want the sun to go down upon our wrath. We don't lay corrupt communication to sit out of our mouth. And there's going to be a lot of times the quarreling is going to rise up, evil for evil, railing for railing. And, you know, you, you can get upset. I, I have. Even recently, I had to call somebody up and apologize to them because I was angry. Well, you see now, judge yourself so you won't be judged. Ask the Lord to forgive you. Say, Lord, I'm going to forgive you. But see, some people, bless their hearts, they live like they don't, haven't done anything wrong. And we're not talking about somebody who's got a real revelation of the righteousness of God in Christ. They just think that the, there couldn't possibly be anything they'd done wrong to cause their prayer not to be answered. But we read there before in 1 Peter chapter 3 that prayers can be hindered. Not, you know... Not dwelling with one another in one accord in husbands and wives relationships can hinder prayers big time. And you know, you may, you may be the worship leader of your church. You may be the prophetess in your church. You may be like Miriam. But what she said was wrong and she got leprosy because of this. She gave place to the devil. See, the devil's always looking for a way to get in. He's waiting for the hedge of protection to come down because he wants to get in. And the only thing that's protecting you away from, from Satan is God. And so we want to walk up right before the Lord. You know, just like they tell us about the scientists, tell us about the protection between us and the sun, 
the S-U-N. And if I wasn't there, you know, that shield, well, we could, you know, fry, whatever. Well, now, spiritually speaking, we've got divine protection from God. It works by the law of Christ, by walking in love. Once we receive Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, then we're obligated, responsible by God that we walk in love. So we need to major right away at walking in God kind of love, forgiving others, not holding anything against anybody. So when envy and strife enters in, so does everything else. You know, over here in 1 Corinthians, notice here in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Now the scripture says here, beginning in verse 23, this is, usually we use this on communion. For, for I received the Lord, Paul said by the Holy Spirit, that which I shall deliver to you, that the Lord Jesus same night betrayed, took bread. When he given thanks, he broke and said, Take ye, this is my body, it's broken for you, this do remember me. After the same man also, he took the cup. When he stopped saying, This cup is new test my blood, this do you often drink, remember me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you just show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever eat this bread and drink this cup, the Lord unworthy, un, 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 shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself. Now, who do we examine? Not somebody else. Ourself. But let a man examine himself, and so eat the bread and drink the cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation himself, not in the Lord's body. For this cause. Now, because we didn't judge ourselves, because we didn't examine ourselves, and we examined others. Now, look, as the body of Christ. Now, look what happened. For this cause, many, not a few, many are weak and sickly among them, many sleep. For if we judge ourselves, we shall not be judged. We're judged with chaste the Lord, we shall not be condemned in the world. Well, we want that shield of faith up so to quench all the fiery darts of wicked in Ephesians chapter 6. Above all, take the shield of faith wherewith you should be able to quench all the fiery darts of wicked and take the helm of salvation, the spirit, which is the word of God. Well, as we walk in love and walk in God's perfect will, say build up spiritually. No matter who the person is, no matter how knowledgeable the word is, I mean theology degree, doctor of divinity, and everything else, know the Greek and Hebrew words. It's important that all of us keep the law of Christ. The royal law, it's called in James. A new commandment gives you love one another. Well, you know, holding forgiveness, unforgiveness against somebody and not forgiving them is not walking in love. Judging others is not walking in love. I mean, we got to go over this and over this as Christians, as believers. There's too many people weak and sickly among us. And many sleep. That means they died prematurely. And there's been doctrines made that just goes to show God doesn't know he's healed. That just goes to show God is in control. That just goes to show you never know what God will do. Well, we may never know what people will do, but we, we can always know what God's going to do. He's going to do what his word says to do. And we need to follow his example he led, gave us through Jesus Christ. Now, Jesus was bold. Jesus is very controversial. And Jesus never lied. Jesus stood up for truth, for the word of God. But, and Jesus rebuked people. But he said in his word, judge not, at least you be judged. So we don't want to judge anyone. We don't want any strife, any unforgiveness, any evil for evil. We don't want to examine others. We don't want to examine our hearts. Because you'll hear people say about other people, well, they got a good heart. Well, good, what are you saying? Well, you know, they didn't get healed. Yeah, well, they may have had a good heart. I don't think about that. I believe God said they did. He or she did. God looks in the heart. I realize that. But don't ever take sides against God's word. You know, just knowing scriptures, what helped me out with long life scriptures, divine protection scriptures, divine healing scriptures. I may have never said anything to somebody about something when they brought up about brother so-and-so or pastor so-and-so or bishop so-and-so or Elder or elders or deacon or deaconess, so-and-so, had all the faith in the world, loved the Lord, went to church all the time, and they died with whatever. Now, I may never say anything about it because it's usually none of my business. But at least I, I got a hold of a few scriptures to be able to use against Satan, that I can say, Satan, I know what you're trying to do here. In other words, see, Satan will say, now, they didn't get healed, and you're not going to either. I'll just say, Satan, I don't think about them. But I know that himself took my infirmities to bear my sicknesses. And by his stripes I'm healed. Christ into curse, redeemed the curse of the law. And God wishes above all things that I prosper and be in health. Now I can't, I don't think about that. It's none of my business. But I know. And I just go back over what I know. But himself took my infirmities to bear my sicknesses. And you ain't going to put that on me, Satan. I'm walking in love in Jesus' name. 
And see, Satan will always see, he's always going to come and charge up the hill, see if, you know, if he can flankly get around you or get through you. But if you've got that sword of spirit up, and you got that shield of faith, that, in other words, you got the sword of the spirit coming out of your mouth, and you're standing behind that shield of faith. You're doing what God told you to do. You get yourself an armor that God gave you. You, you make sure that you've kept yourself built up spiritually so this armor can protect you. Then no matter what the devil throws up against you, it's not going to stick. It'll bounce off, glare off. But see, sometimes, some of us, sin, didn't walk in love, didn't forgive others, judged others. This is all sin. We need to call it what it is. And we got in trouble. That shield of faith wasn't up to quench all the fire darts wicked. Those fire darts aren't any fun. You ever had him? Afflictions, long continuous sore sickness, unanswered prayers, th problems happening. Why? Well, they got hindered. The prayer got hindered. The faith got hindered. You know how many times you went online, all of a sudden you just, you know, you're offline now. You don't even know how it happened. You're on your cell phone now. You know you're, you're not on any longer. You're beyond the tower. There's no tower where you're at. You know, you've got to drop call. can't even figure out why. The other person, if they're not familiar with cell phones, they're going to think you hung up. There used to be this lady I knew, and we're her and I get some pretty <clears throat> decent discussions oh, on the phone, see. And, uh, oh. and about the time it's getting real heated, the phone would go dead. And she always thought, I think still this day, that I hung up on her. And I'd, I'd call her back right away and say, I didn't hang up on you. This is a drop call. <laughs> she didn't believe it. Well, now, you know, you can just be going about your way, doing your best to believe God, so you think. And you're not receiving from God. I've had that happen. Had to go to the Lord and examine myself. Okay, Lord, what's going on? Get in the Word, spend time in the Word. And many times, you're not going to like the answer you get from the Word. But you realize when you see that verse, ooh, this is something here that I, I've been avoided. I haven't been paying attention to. Like I've said sometimes, I didn't realize God was that serious about it. He is. If it's in His Word, you, can, you know He's serious about it. So here in 1 Corinthians, I referred to this in chapter 3. The Scripture said, Paul said this by the Holy Spirit. So Holy Spirit I like to say it through the Holy Spirit through Apostle Paul. And our brethren could not speak as in a spiritual, but as in a carnal, he was baby's uh, Christ. For I fed you with milk, and not with meat. For here unto you are you uh, carnal, and walk as mere men. Now notice here, this verse 5 here, it says, or excuse me, verse 3, it says he calls him carnal. Now notice why he calls him carnal. For when there's envy, strife, and divisions, are you not carnal, walk as men. Now, here the early church is, is in envy and in strife. Carnal. That's what carnal Christians do. Now, we wouldn't like to think we're carnal, would we? But many times we have been. Anytime we got over an envy, strife, division, discord, that's being carnal. That's allow our, our carnal nature, our flesh that's not born again, our minds that's not born again, align them to have their way. So when you find yourself thinking about things that's not lovely or good report or virtuous or praiseworthy, then they don't need to be thinking about it. Now, none of us are perfect at this, but we all have to work on it. Because our thought process can get us into trouble if we don't cast down vain imaginations and every high thing is all self against the knowledge of God. You know, we, we can get so that we think we're better than someone else. Or we can think that, you know, God loves someone else better than us, and so why should we even try to do what we believe God wants us to do? Because maybe we failed so many times. Well, that means how many times you failed. You still got to do what God tells you to do. You spend the rest of your life even trying to do it. You want to make sure that when you leave this world, you were at least doing everything you do, knew to do to do the Word and to do what God told you to do and, and beyond the Word. You know, like if He told you to stay where you're at, stay where you're at. He told you to leave, then leave. You know, Jonah was supposed to go to some place. Other people are supposed to stay where they're at. But you got to follow, first of all, put the Word first. And then secondly, whatever you get in your spirit, make sure it's in line with the Word. Because the Holy Spirit will never tell you to do something that contradicts the Word of God. I missed God before because I didn't go by what I had in the Word, what I knew from the Word. Thought maybe I heard from God and it was just like a, a devil, familiar spirit. So follow the Word. Build your life on God's Word. And something comes to you, no matter how spectacular it may sound, seem, or appear, you want to think, now what does the Word say about this? 
And if you sin, judge yourself. Forgive others. Have compassion and mercy on others. And you can be tough on yourself. But make sure that you're thinking, I, I, no, in Jesus' name, I'm going to walk in love. I'm not going to judge anybody. In the name of Jesus, I'm not going to get in this envy, strife, and division. I'm not going to be carnal. They're talking about one's of Paul, one of Paulus. Who's Paul? Who's Paul? But minister by whom you receive or God gave to us. Paul planted, Apollos water, but God gave the increase. So then neither he that planted thing, neither he water, but it's God. I mean, some people are following their denomination or their preacher more than they are the word of God. No, we need to make sure anything, anything comes up, we're thinking, what does my new covenant say about this? I mean, Abraham, you think about him. I mean, think about all the times he's referred to in the New Testament, those epistle letters. But one thing about Abraham, he had a habit of walking in love and forgiving others. He went to Lot when the herdsmen were in strife and said we need to separate ourselves. Why? Because there's strife. And I've went to people, too. I said, you know, I love you, and I'm sure you love me, but we're going to go our own ways. It's too bad, you know. A lot of tears over. But you got to stay away from strife. And so some people won't quit gossiping. They won't quit spreading strife. And they just keep going on and on and on and on. And just won't let go of it. And you know what? You don't want to hang around this stuff. You got to pray and you know seek God about what to even do about it. But first of all, bind that spirit of strife and division in Jesus' name. Recognize where it's coming from. This is like Judas, you know, why in, in John chapter 12. Why wasn't this perfume sold and given to the poor? Think about this. Think what he's saying. He's the one bringing division to this ministry. He's listening to Satan. This is inspired by the Holy Spirit. Yo, oh, yeah, look at what he's talking about. Telling this to, in front of Jesus? Because this lady poured her expensive perfume upon Jesus' feet? This is nice stuff. I mean, this is almost equivalent to a year's salary of a labor. Why wouldn't this sold, you know, the money given to three and pence given the poor? And the verse 6 says, by the Holy Spirit, not that Judas cared the poor, but was a thief and, and bare the bag and had what was in it. So it wasn't that Judas cared about the poor. Judas is causing problems here. He's causing strife. He's sowing discord among the body of Christ or the disciples in Jesus' ministry. And Jesus let, her, you know, let him know that you know, leave her alone. I mean, this would have been a perfect time for Jesus to say, Mary, 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 hold on now. Now, that's just, that's wasting money. This could be giving the poor, because no one gave the poor like Jesus did. Yet he said, you always had the poor with you. I mean, they thought when Judas went out to betray Jesus, that Jesus had Judas go out and give the poor. So you know Jesus is known by his disciples for helping the poor out. But think about this. How Judas acted and how he talked about Jesus Christ, who never did him wrong. You can, it's, it's easy to become deceived. You can become so deceived as a believer that you find yourself doing things, saying things, and thinking things that you didn't even do before you got saved. And remember earlier, we read this week, Jesus, when an unclean spirit goes out on man, he, will draw, he walks through dry places to seek and rest and finding them. Then he saith, I'll go back to my house once I came out. When he comes, he finds it empty, swept, and garnished. Then goeth he and take himself seven other spirits, more work himself, and they enter there and dwell there. And the last day of that man is worse than the beginning. So should be also in this wicked generation. From Matthew chapter 12, verse 43 through verse 45. Well, this is how the devil operates. We need to watch ourselves, that we always judge ourselves. In Jesus' name. Always ask God to forgive us. And, you know, like James said, be swift to hear and slow to speak. Now, I think for a long time I practiced that in reverse. I, I swift to speak and slow to hear. Now, hear this out, you know. We need to learn to not be so quick to say something. Think about what we get ready to say before we say it. Is this, is this wholesome? Is this godly? It's going to help this person out. Again, be, you'll be severely tested and tempted in this area the rest of your life because the devil knows there's probably nothing more damaged to a believer than to get him in strife, get him in unforgiveness, get him sowing discord among the brethren because God ain't going to put up with it. He'll judge it. He'll jump on it. He'll permit the person to be turned over Satan's destruction of the flesh. Now, God loves us, but he's got the long picture in mind. 
He's not so much concerned about what we think about him today and our feelings and our emotions. He doesn't want us to go into hell. And this devil's doing all he can to take you and I to hell. All of us as believers have got to always watch our, our lives, you know. I wish I'd have never said anything about anybody my whole Christian life. Yeah, I knew better. Some people didn't know any better. Or never judged anybody. Wish I could stand here today and say, you know, I'll tell you one thing about it. I've never judged anybody. God's always helped. And I've never said anything about anybody else. And, I, and I've never sinned since I've been saved. Wish I could say that. Can't say that. But the thing is, we're not to sin. We're not to judge anybody else. And we are to forgive everybody. Any, any least little thing. You know, forgive one another. I forgive you and you forgive me. Let go of it and go on with God. And just turn things over to the Lord and say, Lord, you know, you're, you're God. You're the judge. You're the one that, like Abraham said, should not the judge of all this earth do what's right? Well, see now, this is Abraham pleading the case for Lot, Sodom and Gomorrah. And see, we as intercessors, we may see things going on in this world. By us interceding, can hold back the wrath of God, the judgment of God, because Jesus actually bore that wrath and judgment. And what we need to be is intercessors. We need to be kings and priests. Kings decree and declare, and priests intercede and pray. And we need to operate in both those ministries as believers. There's a lot of people we need to be. I mean, if all of us just prayed for all the people that we just knew individually, that's look how busy we'd keep ourselves. So again, Jesus told us. To love our enemies. Bless them that curse us. Do good, they hate us. Pray for them spitefully, use us as persecutors. See, bless, do good, pray. See, we're, we're going to spend the rest of our life loving, blessing, good, doing good, and praying for people. Love, bless, do good, and pray. That's a, you know, I've often said that's a full-time job just for me to do. I don't have time to keep track of someone else. i got to work on myself to make sure that I'm walking in love. I want to encourage you. Keep working on your love walk. Do all you can to forgive others. Let go of bitterness. Don't let any strife in your life. Ask God to forgive you. Father, we pray today in Jesus' name. We ask you, Lord, to forgive us for judging anyone. For, forgive us, Lord, for holding unforgiveness against anyone. Forgive us, Lord, for allowing ourselves to get into strife. We judge yourself today. You said if we judge ourselves, we should not be judged. We thank you, Lord, for forgiving us and cleansing us today in the name of Jesus. If you don't have a scripture card entitled, My Commitment to Forgive, get it today. Order it today on our website or contact the ministry. Enjoyed being with you. Have a great weekend. Until next time, it's Pastor Jess Richmond. We love you, praying for you. And remember, Jesus is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Thank you for joining the broadcast of Word of Faith the outreach ministry and teachings of Jesse Rich. If you'd like for Brother Rich to agree with you in prayer or to receive a copy of today's program or additional teaching materials, contact Jesse Rich Ministries, Post Office Box 237-170, New York, New York, 10023. For additional information, church location, or upcoming seminars in your area, visit our website at www.jesserichministries.com.